Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful New Year's Day. Um, hopefully not too worn out from festivities last night. It's been a little while since I've been on. Uh, I have been taking some much needed rest time over the holidays. It was, um, I had, it was weird, but lovely. So my children are now grown. I'm an empty nester. Uh, this was the first year where they weren't here for actual Christmas, which was kind of weird for me. Um, but it was actually awesome as well because I got to just kind of re relax and rest and spend some time with other family members and just spend some time being quiet. I got um, Michelle Obama's new books. I'm really looking forward to, I'm, I'm about 70 pages in and really enjoying it and looking forward to finishing that off. So anyway, I hope you had a wonderful um, holiday, you know, couple of weeks, whether you felt whatever you celebrated. And today being New Year's Day, I always spend some time reflecting. And I was thinking back to how many, about how many years I had diet and weight loss resolutions on my New Year's or on my yeah, New Year's resolutions list and how long those resolutions lasted. Um, I did do Whole30 a couple of times. So, you know, I lasted at least 30 days with those. Um, I've actually done Whole30 four times. And even Whole30, I think, falls into, we kind of fall into this trap, even with um, something like Whole30. So when I talk about diets, I usually mean eating in a way that's restrictive, whether that means restricting calories, which is, you know, definitely um, very problematic and well studied, um, or restricting food groups, restricting, um, you know, having all these shoulds and shouldn'ts around eating. Not sure if anyone's on yet, but if you are hopping on, just say hello. If you're watching on the replay, um, give me a thumbs up, say hello. I'd love to hear what your um, thoughts are on New, New Year's resolutions. But I was actually on my personal page talking about this a little bit, and I wanted to hop in here and go a little deeper um, because this group is really near and dear to my heart, and I really want to make sure I'm providing support for you guys and um, I, you know, starting to really incorporate intuitive eating ideas into the group more. So you're going to be seeing more and more of that and more of me talking about why diets don't work because um, I see them being really harmful. And so I want to still start to help eradicate the idea that it's our fault when a diet doesn't work and instead help everyone to know that it's the diets that are broken. It's not you that is broken. So um, oh, someone's hopped on. Hello, hello, welcome. Um, so yeah, so diets are broken, not you. And here's why, here's what happens. So I've talked about this a little bit before, but we basically, you know, we eat in a way that feels out of control or we've gained weight or we feel like, you know, we're not eating well. And so we feel like we have no willpower and that we can't be trusted with food and that we need to control our food. So we find a diet plan whether it be, you know, something that's restricting calories or whether it's um, something like Whole30 that cuts out like grains and sugar and all of that. And we do this diet for a certain period of time. But while we're doing it, our body either isn't getting enough calories or isn't getting what it wants or needs. And so the, our body will start to give us any signals, like an increased desire for food. So we get increased hunger signals. Our satisfaction signals actually go down. Our desire for certain foods uh, increases the, the amount we're thinking about it. And also even how good it tastes when we do eat it, right? So, you know, a lot of you know on Whole30, things start to taste really sweet. Um, and that's because our body wants us to eat it, right? <laughs> so these foods are, you know, become more and more and more attractive until we either are done with the diet or we fall off the wagon and we start to eat all of these foods, right? And we eat more and more and more of them until we feel like, oh my gosh, I can't be trusted with food, right? And we have all of this guilt and shame. And so diets are inherently flawed. And so it's not the diet that's the problem. It's not you that's the problem. It's not your lack of willpower. It's the diet that is the problem. And so what can we do about that? Well, first reject diet culture and diet mentality. So reject the idea that there's a perfect way to eat. Um, reject the, we call it the food police and intuitive eating. So the, these, you know, little devil and little um, angel on our shoulders, right? Or this, the shoulds and shouldn'ts around food. So I recently worked with a woman who thought she shouldn't eat after seven o'clock at night, um, but she wasn't eating much during the day because she was really um, invested in her work and didn't want to stop to eat. 
And so she wasn't eating until like five o'clock and she wasn't getting enough calories. And then she was hungry again around 10 o'clock, which is totally normal to be hungry, you know, three to five hours after you've eaten. And but she wasn't letting herself eat. And so I recently saw her and she said, well, thank you so much. I've been eating food. <laughs> and we had a good laugh about that. And she said that, you know, she actually hadn't even increased in her weight, but that she had so much more energy, right? So sometimes we have the food police. We have these arbitrary rules around food. And that's part of the problem with diet culture is that we have, you know, these, um, the, the fear mongering that happens, like carbs are bad, or, you know, for a while it was fat that was bad, or certain types of fats are bad, or, oh my gosh, you know, canola oil, right? Or um, even like the pH of your water, right? And we get so caught up in what we should and shouldn't eat, and it becomes a struggle, even when we're not trying to diet, right? But diets actually add to that as well. So rejecting all of that and instead starting to use our own bodies as the guide and so letting go of judgment letting go of guilt and shame around eating even if you ate a whole pint or a whole gallon of ice cream right there's a reason that that happened and so if we can step back from that instead of setting a resolution i'm going to lose this many pounds or i'm going to do this diet or i'm going to um you know control i'm going to eat better right Instead, look at what is my body feeling? What does my body need? Um, so the example I was just talking about on my personal page is that I discovered that for me, overworking was contributing to an increased desire for food and eating in a way that felt out of control sometimes. And so rather than try to control my food, instead, I'm committing to not overworking anymore. Um, and so that's my New Year's intention is actually not overworking. And so I'm doing things to shift that and it's going to take time because this is a habit of mine i like what i do and i tend to um, do it a lot <laughs> but you know i'm putting some systems in place i'm putting some boundaries up for myself um, i took facebook off of my phone so i have to literally get on my computer to do it now um, i am committing to like not working late into the evening anymore i have days off that are entire days off that are not allowed, work, no working allowed. So I'm doing these things instead. And so that my stress is going down, my fatigue's going down, and I don't have as much of a desire to eat the whole bag of potato chips or eat the whole you know, pint of ice cream, whatever it is. All right, so all of that being said, it's really challenging at first to shift from diet culture and diet mentality and reject the food police and learn how to let go of judgment of yourself and have forgiveness with yourself and to learn to look at things instead from a lens of curiosity, right? And start to examine situations um, where you did eat in a way that maybe you normally would feel guilt or shame around. Instead, looking at that with, oh, what was going on with me that led up to that? How did that feel? Oh, it didn't feel great. Maybe I don't want to keep doing this, right? Um, so it can be really challenging to do those things. And so um, that's what I'm here for, right? And of course, you can always post in this group. Please, please, please like this video. Um, you know, type in the comments if you can relate to any of these things that I'm talking about and any wins that you've had. It. I'd love to hear the wins as well. And please invite your friends that you feel like would benefit from hearing this message. Um, I really want to spread this message to as many women as possible. And this is how I do it, right, through coaching. And um, in this group, there's a lot of opportunity to get support and get information, and it's entirely free. If you are feeling like you want additional support and you really want to dive into this, so instead of doing a New Year's resolution around diet and weight loss, instead having a New Year's intention to begin healing your relationship with food, I have some opportunities for you. So one of the opportunities is a workshop, it's just an hour and a half workshop on um, Wednesday the 9th. So that's a week from tomorrow and it's $20 it's online really easy to access and I'll be kind of talking about the core principles of intuitive eating and you know why we eat in a way that feels out of control and why we feel like we can't trust ourselves with food and how to start to let go of those food police rules so really some tools that we can start to implement immediately and then um, later in January, starting uh, also on Wednesday night, January 23rd, I'm launching my first online intuitive eating course. 
And this is going to be a special one-time offer. It is going to be taught live. So you'll get um, videos and weekly assignments, but then we'll have a live discussion class each week. And so in the future, I'll have it recorded and it'll be online and people will be able to access it, but they won't have that live interaction with me. Um, so the point of this group, I'm really um, keeping it very small, limited to 12 people. And the point of the, the group is to dive into all 10 principles of intuitive eating. And also for me to see what I want, what all I want to be sure to include in my recorded online um, course for the future. So I'm offering it at a really discounted rate. You'll have a lot of, um, there's a lot of goodies in there and a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with me. So um, if you're interested in either one of those, I will drop up the link in the comments. In fact, I think I can do it right. Can I comment while I'm talking? Holy smokes, guys, I can. I can comment while I'm talking, but I don't have the links right here. <laughs> anyway, I will, um, I'll post the links in the comments. And if you have any questions about the course, um, coming to the workshop is a great way to kind of see how I work and learn more about intuitive eating. And I'm happy to also have a discussion with you. So feel free to reach out, um, you know, message me, um, ask questions in this, in this video as well if you'd like to and again please like the video please share and um i love it when people like my business page as well all of these things help increase my visibility so i can spread this message to as many women as possible i truly believe that women are carrying this weight of diet culture and diet mentality and spending all of this mental emotional um, energy struggling with food and trying to control their hunger and their relationship with food and all of that energy is wasted we're going to be talking about that a lot in this group as well if you didn't have to think about food in that way anymore if you didn't have to worry about it or obsess about it if you could use food just as a way to nourish yourself and satisfy yourself and then move on what would that look like in your life and what how much time and energy would you have to devote to other things so I want to empower, especially women leaders, to be free of all of that wasted mental and emotional energy and instead put it into nourishing themselves and doing the things that they're passionate about. Because we need women leaders who are empowered and who are able to step into um, and do their magic in the world right now. We need that. So um, I don't talk about politics a lot in here, but um, I am pretty liberal and um elizabeth warren just said she's going to be you know she's going to be running for president this uh next round and just you know i just think about like if she was spending all her time like stressing about food um instead of out there like fighting the fight what you know how different that would be right so we need more women like that who are able to um focus on their work and their leadership and be empowered so that's my goal um, for this year is to spread the message to as many people as possible. And the way that I do that is through, you know, being on Facebook, being on, um, you know, on video, on YouTube, all of those things. So like, share, invite. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.